After a load, Wikipedia article audio. After a load is the pressure against which the heart must work to eject blood during systole. In other words, it is the end load against which the heart contracts to eject blood. After a load is readily broken into components, one factor is the aortic pressure the left ventricular muscle must overcome to eject blood. The greater the aortic slash pulmonary pressure, the greater the after load on the left slash right ventricle, respectively. Following Laplace's law, the tension upon the muscle fibers in the heart wall is the pressure within the ventricle multiplied by the volume within the ventricle divided by the wall thickness. Therefore, when comparing a normal heart to a heart with a dilated left ventricle, if the aortic pressure is the same in both hearts, the dilated heart must create a greater tension to overcome the same aortic pressure to eject blood because it has a larger internal radius and volume. Thus, the dilated heart has a greater total load on the myocytes, i.e., has a higher afterload. This is also true in the eccentric hypertrophy consequent to high-intensity aerobic training. Conversely, a concentrically hypertrophied left ventricle may have a lower afterload for a given aortic pressure. When contractility becomes impaired and the ventricle dilates, the afterload rises and limits output. This may start a vicious circle, in which cardiac output is reduced as oxygen requirements are increased. After a load can also be described as the pressure that the chambers of the heart must generate in order to eject blood out of the heart and thus is a consequence of the aortic pressure and pulmonic pressure or pulmonary artery pressure. The pressure in the ventricles must be greater than the systemic and pulmonary pressure to open the aortic and pulmonic valves, respectively. As after a load increases, cardiac output decreases. Cardiac imaging is a somewhat limited modality in defining afterload because it depends on the interpretation of volumetric data. Pathology Disease processes pathology that include indicators such as an increasing left ventricular afterload include elevated blood pressure and aortic valve disease. Systemic hypertension increases the left ventricular afterload because the LV must work harder to eject blood into the aorta. This is because the aortic valve won't open until the pressure generated in the left ventricle is higher than the elevated blood pressure in the aorta. Pulmonary hypertension is increased blood pressure within the right heart leading to the lungs. pH indicates a regionally applied increase in afterload dedicated to the right side of the heart, divided and isolated from the left heart by the interventricular septum. In the natural aging process, aortic stenosis often increases after a load because the left ventricle must overcome the pressure gradient caused by the calcified and stenotic aortic valve in addition to the blood pressure in order to eject blood into the aorta. For instance, if the blood pressure is 120-80, and the aortic valve stenosis creates a transvalvular gradient of 30 mmHg, the left ventricle has to generate a pressure of 110 mmHg in order to open the aortic valve and eject blood into the aorta. Due to the increased afterload, the ventricle has to work harder to accomplish its goal of ejecting blood into the aorta. Thus in the long term, the increased afterload will result in hypertrophy of the left ventricle to account for the increased work required. Aortic insufficiency increases after a load because a percentage of the blood that is ejected forward regurgitates back through the diseased aortic valve. This leads to elevated systolic blood pressure. The diastolic blood pressure in the aorta would fall, due to regurgitation. This would result in an increase in pulse pressure. Mitral regurgitation mister decreases after a load. In ventricular systole under MR, 
regurgitant blood flows backwards slash retrograde back and forth through a diseased and leaking mitral valve. The remaining blood loaded into the LV is then optimally ejected out through the aortic valve. With an extra pathway for blood flow through the mitral valve, the left ventricle does not have to work as hard to eject its blood, i.e. there is a decreased afterload. Afterload is largely dependent upon aortic pressure.